Thank you. Muchas gracias, Kim. And uh, welcome, uh, ministers and uh, representatives and guests from uh, the Americas and from Germany. Uh, welcome to Israel. Welcome to Jerusalem. Everything is becoming technologized. Well, I hope not. And I don't believe that's quite true. I don't think that uh, technology will ever reproduce the haunting poetry of the Bible or of Shakespeare or of Cervantes. But it is entering everything. I've just heard of a, an algorithm and a program that defeated the best debater uh, in Israel. Well, I'm not sure they tried the best debater, but, <laughs> but it tells you um, about an undeniable truth, and that is that as technology seeps into every layer, and the differences between high technology, high tech, middle tech, low tech, is disappearing rapidly. Now, some things may take more time, but they're happening. They used to say that agriculture is not technologized. Let's talk about that in a minute. Everything is being technologized. Not the human spirit, but everything is being technologized. Therefore, the future belongs to those who can innovate and create new technology. New technology creates its own demand. Look at what you're doing. You're holding this. Where were you 20 years ago? It didn't exist, or it began. New technology creates its own industries. It creates its own wealth. It's not merely that it answers existing demands. It creates new demand. And therefore, it creates new wealth. The future belongs to those who innovate. If you are not part of the innovation, you'll fall behind. And you'll be impoverished. So innovation is not a luxury. It's a necessity. Here's the world in 2006, and here's the world in 2016 in terms of the 10 leading companies. Five energy companies in black, three financial, one IT, one Microsoft. A beer 10 years later, five IT, one left energy, Exxon went from number one to number five. What is this? What is this change? This change is the confluence of innovation in three areas, big data, AI, and connectivity. That is revolutionizing the world. The companies who are here are also here in Israel. They are among 300 multinational R&D centers, all of the ones you saw there and many others. They're here because they think that they can get AI, big data, connectivity, and other things. Let's see the new industries that we're creating here in Israel that I think could be beneficial to you and the things that we could do together that will be beneficial to us together. The first one I mentioned is agriculture. Let's look at precision agriculture. Did you see this today on your visit? You did? All right. So here's a drone in the sky. Israel is long known for uh, pioneering drip irrigation, which also means drip fertilization. Okay. Uh, but what it, we're doing here is a drone in the sky tied to a database and sensors on the ground, and we target the water and fertilizer down to the individual plant. Not to the field, not to part of the field, but to the individual plant. The increases in productivity are startling. If you're not doing it, you're going to fall behind. Let's look at another example of big data, AI, and connectivity. It's called cyber. Let's look at cybersecurity in Israel. No, show the sales. Can you show that? Show sales. There it is. It's growing. Okay. This amounts to 20% of 
of the global private investment in cybersecurity. We are one-tenth of 1% 1 of the world's population, and we're getting 20% of the global investment in cybersecurity, private cybersecurity investment. That's 200 times our weight in the world population. Not 10 times, not 20 times, 200 times, okay? Here's uh, what it was in 2014. Here's what it is in 2017. Can you show the companies, the leading companies rated by, uh, well, okay, that, okay? This is America. It's 42 times our size. Number two, Israel. Germany, Germany, back. Come back. Very important. We want to work with Germany, with everyone. But it tells you something is going on here. It's a big thing. Here's what is happening. Can you show that slide of what, is, uh, what we're doing? Exports in 2017, 3.8 billion. Investments, it's going to, in 2018, looks like it'll cross the $1 billion. Uh, two, 420 cybersecurity companies, uh, 50 international R&D centers, ranked top 10 in cyber academic research. We can't stand on our laurels. We're doing a think uh, process about the new uh, sciences and new, new technologies that we need, primarily looking at the field of, uh, of uh, quantum mathematics and quantum computing. But that's one example. There are five others. We're actually going to focus on that as a government, just as we focused on cyber. Now, understand, cyber comes from sunk investment. Israel invests in cyber. It invested because we invest in our military, in our NSA. Our NSA is large. It's very, very large because we need a big head in the army. And it's, uh, it's second uh, in those that we can talk about. I can't speak of China or Russia, but I can speak of the services that I know. It's number two in the world in absolute size. Number two in the world in absolute size. So that's money we spend anyway. What we're doing is saying, since we invest that in the, our uh, security, we may as well allow that investment to mature and grow and proliferate into the cybersecurity industry. Israel is a place where you have precision agriculture and cybersecurity. What else does it have? How about autonomous vehicles? You need to eat food, and you need to be safe in your bank accounts, in your airplanes, that's what cyber does, in your vehicles, everything. You also need to move around, and to move around, we have a smart mobility revolution that has happened here. Uh, when we tried to have a car industry 50 years ago, we failed. We couldn't produce the scale for chassis or engines, we just couldn't compete. But as cars become computers on wheels, uh, they have, uh, uh, they've changed completely. They've changed completely. And soon 85% of a car's value will be software. Now we can compete. Uh, we have these uh, uh, hundreds of companies that are now dealing in smart mobility, but you know Waze, for, do you use Waze? No, well, it's an Israeli company sold for a billion dollars cheap to uh, Google. It's worth a lot more than that. And this is uh, Mobileye, which is a company right here in Jerusalem. I don't know if you have a chance to visit it. Uh, it was sold for $15 billion to Intel. Uh, it creates uh, autonomous vehicle systems, which will make driving a lot safer uh, and in many, give many other advantages. So here's a third industry that exists, didn't exist. If you came here 20 years ago, there was nothing. And now, technology creates its own demand. It creates new wealth. There's uh, many, many, many others, but I'll say, what is the last area that I want to point out to you? Because I think it changes the world. We need cybersecurity. We need food. We need to move around. And we also want to be healthy. Digital health is the most promising of all the promising fields that I told you about. In Israel, we have uh, a database of the entire population. 98% of the population has digital 
uh, medical records that tell you their medical records for the last 20 years. If you go to a hospital anywhere in Israel, you don't need to pull out the medical files, it's there. You swap a card and you know exactly what's in there. Okay? Of these, this database, we're going to take 100,000 100, saliva tests. So we have DNA subset. And of these, we're going to take 2,000 people and monitor their physiological behavior. We now have a three-layer database and we're going to run algorithms on this. And when we run algorithms, we think we can have both personalized medicine and preventive medicine in ways that are unanticipated. We all want to live longer and we want to live healthier. And this is made possible by big data, artificial intelligence, and connectivity. This is the revolution of the world. I think we all have to be part of it. We can change life. We can make life safer, healthier, better in many, many ways. And this is what we offer in Israel in partnership with all of you. Latin America is uh, a great friend to Israel. We never forget that in the uh, resolution of the UN to establish a Jewish state, the preponderance of Latin American supporters, uh, something that stood out. That's been a friendship that has existed over the years, but I'm very proud of the fact that I'm the first sitting Israeli prime minister who visited Latin America. Can you imagine? No prime minister before visited any country south of Texas. But now that I did this, I did the Mucholero route. You know, I went from, uh, went from Argentina to Colombia to Mexico, but I want to come back again. And I spoke to the Secretary General about coming to one of your meetings. We intend to have more. We uh, have very, very strong feelings of sympathy uh, with an identification with Latin America. We sent two rescue missions uh, recently, two assistant missions, one to Mexico and the tragedy that transpired there, now to Guatemala with a doctor's mission. And uh, it reflects uh, that sentiment. So in that spirit, we welcome you here. We think we can do a great deal together with you, with Germany, with many others. We think that it is possible to seize the future. The future belongs to those who innovate. Israel is an innovation nation. We want to be your partner in seizing the future. Thank you. Thank you.